Welcome back to The Gaming Historian. You know, lately I've been playing a lot of this game, Donkey Kong Country Returns. This game is a lot of fun, and Retro Studios did an amazing job updating the Donkey Kong Country series. Playing this game got me thinking about the Donkey Kong series, and how far it's come. From its beginnings in the arcade in 1981 to this latest release, Donkey Kong has changed a lot. Remember Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo? Rare and Nintendo successfully took an old franchise and completely reworked it into a new one. However, sometimes making a change doesn't always work out, and a great example of this is Donkey Kong 3. Donkey Kong 3 introduced some radical changes to the original series and even brought on a new hero, Stanley the Bugman. But gamers turned away, and the arcade game has long been forgotten. So what was Donkey Kong 3 all about, and why did it fade into obscurity? Let's start with the game that started it all, Donkey Kong. Everybody remembers the arcade hit Donkey Kong, in some form or another. It was released in 1981 by Nintendo, as a last-ditch effort to get a foothold in the North American video game market. The game was a hit and made Nintendo a lot of money. With the success of Donkey Kong, Nintendo made a sequel, Donkey Kong Jr. This game followed a similar gameplay style as the original, but this time you played as Donkey Kong Jr. It didn't make as much as the first Donkey Kong, but it's still considered a classic. Even though Nintendo was successful with their platform-style arcade games, they decided to make a change. Space shooters were still popular during this time, especially Galaga. Nintendo made an attempt to combine the charm of their Donkey Kong series with the fast-paced action of the space shooters. What resulted was Donkey Kong 3. First off, an interesting fact. Nintendo never actually released a dedicated Donkey Kong 3 cabinet. Instead, they released a Donkey Kong 3 conversion kit. This would allow you to transform an older Nintendo arcade cabinet into a Donkey Kong 3 cabinet. In Donkey Kong 3, you play as Stanley the Bugman, a gardener who decides to protect his precious plants from Donkey Kong, who has crashed into his greenhouse. Donkey Kong releases waves of bugs at you while also throwing coconuts. Armed with his bug spray can, Stanley must shoot his insect repellent up at Donkey Kong until he runs away or crashes to the ground. So you might be wondering, who the heck is Stanley the Bugman? Believe it or not, Stanley's origins can be traced back to a Game & Watch game released in 1982 known as Greenhouse, where you had to protect your flowers from insects. Here he was known as the Fumigator. <laughs> But with his appearance in Donkey Kong 3, his name was changed to Stanley. It's unclear why Nintendo chose to use Stanley instead of Mario, but here's my theory. The storyline from the first two games was pretty much done. Mario captures Donkey Kong and saves Pauline. Donkey Kong Jr. rescues him, and they part their ways. Maybe the developers felt it was time for a new storyline with a new hero. It's not like Mario to be equipped with a spray gun. He's more about jumping. Plus, he doesn't have these dance moves. So, let's talk a little about the game. As I said before, you play as Stanley, a guy trying to protect his plants from Donkey Kong and his minions of bugs. The gameplay is a mix of shooter and platforming, as you have to maneuver your way up these platforms while also shooting bugs, and Donkey Kong, with your spray gun. In some levels, if you get Donkey Kong high enough, you get access to a super spray gun, which is a really nice upgrade. It tears through enemies, and also has a longer range, allowing you to shoot at Donkey Kong safely from the bottom. You can complete the stage by hitting Donkey Kong enough times with your spray gun, or by killing all the bugs. At the end of each level, you get bonus points for each plant that you're able to save. If you get them all taken away, or you get hit, you'll lose a life. But, you get to pick up right where you left off, sort of like in Galaga. The music for Donkey Kong 3 was composed by Hirokazu Tanaka. This was his first composition for a video game. If he sounds familiar, 
Here's why. He would later compose music for some very big games, including Kid Icarus, Metroid, Mother, and... Personally, it's my favorite Donkey Kong arcade game. I love the mix of the two genres, and it's way more addicting to me than the other two Donkey Kong games. But unfortunately for Nintendo, it didn't sell very well. The first Donkey Kong sold 60,000 units. Donkey Kong Jr. sold about 30,000 units. Donkey Kong 3 sold a measly 5,000 units. Along with bad sales came bad reviews. Critics called it a Space Invaders clone and said it wasn't very innovative. I guess it didn't help that the video game crash of 1983 also occurred during its release. It was pretty clear Nintendo wanted to forget about Donkey Kong 3. We wouldn't see another Donkey Kong game until 1994, when the Game Boy game was released. This game was based on the original arcade game, and it's pretty good, I highly recommend it. This is also the first time we see Donkey Kong wearing his tie. Stanley the Bugman was never given another chance. He was featured in the Saturday Supercade cartoon, along with Donkey Kong, but now only traces of him exist. In the Super Smash Bros. series, Mr. Game & Watch uses his bug spray can as a weapon, and he's also a collectible trophy. The game was released on the Wii Virtual Console, but was given average reviews. This is, however, the NES port of the game. The arcade version is the better of the two. Sure, this game is way different than any of the other games in the series, but who cares? It's still a blast to play, and it's got that Nintendo charm. Now, even though this game is mostly forgotten, I know that I'll always remember Donkey Kong 3. And hopefully, after watching this video, you'll remember Donkey Kong 3 as well. Thanks for watching.